Federated Farmers is calling for the government to urgently distance itself from a radical new pine planting proposal released by the Climate Change Commission late last week. The proposal would see large swathes of productive farmland sacrificed in the name of emission reductions. Um, the advice from the commission um, looked at achieving a new Paris target greater than 50% emissions reduction. Now, for context, New Zealand currently has a Paris target of reducing emissions by 50% by 2030. Not that far away. But the government has now been asked by the UN to come up with a new 2035 target by February. What will this all mean for our sheep and our beef stocks? The death knell, according to Federated Farmers Meat and Wool Chair Toby Williams, and he joins me now. Toby, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Leah. Um, look, it sounds a bit ridiculous to me, but we better get the um, you know get the details out of this. So, I'm gathering to come anywhere near this new target, we're talking millions of pine trees being planted. Yeah, millions and millions, eight hundred and fifty thousand hectares. So, you know, you're almost a billion pine trees effectively, which well, is it's a staggering yeah. number. It's just it's can you. Like to put it into perspective, like what are we talking? The kind of size of, of, of where is there a yeah? So, most of the stations, New Zealand's largest farm at 150,000 hectares, and you're looking at, looking at like five multi stations planted. Or if wow. I use the east coast, Gisborne Wairau, we've got about 350,000 hectares of productive farmland in Gisborne and Wairau. So, that would be all of Gisborne and Wairau. Then you still have to go find another half a million hectares from somewhere else in New Zealand just just to cover these targets, which is just ridiculous. It's just, un, yeah, it's, it's someone down in Wellington who's, you know, got a bit pretty pen happy here and hasn't thought about the consequences of doing this. Jeez. Um, the commission envisions that by 2035, we would have 12 to 15% fewer dairy cows and an even dr more drastic 18 to 24% fewer sheep and beef stock. A a am I correct? Is that the figures they were... Yeah, that's, about? What they're, that's what they're working on. So if they're losing dairy cows, it's telling you we're starting to plant really productive, you know, flat country just to get these targets sorted. And mm. what, how are we going to earn an income for New Zealand? You know, what do we do? We can't go to the UN and say, well, we're too poor now. Can we please have a, you know, go on the, the dole for our countries? It's yeah. ridiculous. We, we want new hospitals. We want roads. We want... A functioning society and, and we've got no other options than you know, the primary exports that we currently have so it, you know and the fact that this has been seriously considered by the government is really setting some alarm bells off because you know they it just it, i can't fathom it because not only would like you said you'd be getting rid of, of productive land just for trees what about not to mention the cost of beef and lamb to us to consumers i mean would we if this was to happen, Toby, I mean, I look at lamb now in the in the you know in the grocery store, and I and I just go one day, because it's 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 expensive now. I mean, would we even be able to afford it? I don't think we would, and it's one of those things that we've had. A, we've gone through winter where we had people up in arms about Australia imported Australian sheep meat and beef because we we didn't have enough. It's just the challenge in winter and low kill numbers meant we we didn't have what the you know for local trade needed. So we'll end up becoming a net food importer. And you think about all our dairy products. I mean, milk mm. is looking at about $10 a kilo midpoint for Fonterra now, which is um, great for farmers, but it's not that great for consumers. And as a farmer, you know, we want to be selling it for the highest price possible. We need to make money. We've got environmental gains that we want to be making, and we need to be profitable to be able to do that. But if you're going to drive it up, you know, past what everyday New Zealanders can afford to, you know, to eat and to drink themselves... Mm. Then we we you know, we really are making our country into a into a really poor place to be. So you don't have to be a rural person, Toby. I'm sure to see that planting our landscapes in a blanket of pine trees and undermining our productive sector is 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 tantamount to madness, surely. And I will I will say though, like the Climate Change Commission, they make recommendations. We know that's that's what they're there for. Are we getting a little bit ahead of ourselves thinking that, that the government would even go for this? Like we know under Labor they would be signing up right now. But this government promised to limit farm conversions to forestry and protect local communities and food production. So are you not feeling confident that they would follow through with that? 
Well, some of the of what we've heard through you know through officials and things like that is that there are some um, members of this government um, who are seriously considering this as a good option for New Zealand. Um, you know, and we've got to start questioning the value of the UN and the Paris Accord and all these things if they keep mm-hmm. shifting the target, considering the size of our country. And if we if we went ahead and did this, if we went ahead and reduced our stock numbers and we planted all this, you know, just so we could have some warm fuzzies and, and Greta Thunberg would get off our case, then somewhere else in the world, people still need to eat, still people need people still need dairy. So our South American countries who aren't included in the Paris Accord are more mm-hmm. likely to, you know, to increase the deforestation just to keep feeding more people. So we're gonna actually make the world a worse place even if we decided to do it ourselves, you know, and destroy our own our own country. So it's you know it does ring some alarm bells. We need the government, we need the prime minister to come up and say, look, this is just nonsense. You know, we need to find a better way of reducing our emissions. Because remembering that by putting these pine trees in, we're actually not reducing our emissions. We're only offsetting them. We're not making change anyone's behaviour. There'll be some no, improvements, right. obviously. Um, yeah. Improvements, obviously, with less animals here. But we're already past peak peak you know, dairy, peak sheep, and peak beef in our country. So those numbers are already naturally falling. Um, and, and so what happens if we go, oh, we've got a new target for 2050, we need another three or 400,000 hectares, we can't keep planting our way out of this, we need to change behaviours, and we yeah. need to stop burning so much fossil fuels.